So this is a flight into Fukuok. Um, a, lo a lot of these videos you see, by the way, the approach is kind of old because I recorded the video quite a long time ago. Uh, so they, by now, the uh, all the procedures have been changed, but it doesn't matter. It's a, it's about the concept of approach management and descent management. So we are about to start the uh, procedure turn uh, to land in uh, runway one uh, zero in Fukuok. And let's do an altitude uh, for profile calculation. So we're 35 miles. So let's let's take uh, 30 miles to calculate. So 30 times 3 is 900 feet. Uh, I'm sorry, 9,000 feet. And we're doing 250 knots. So we should fly 2,000 feet lower. So so we should uh, be at 7,000 feet when we pass 30 miles. Okay. So let's skip ahead and wait for it. So there's 30 miles, and we're at 7,500 feet. So we're 500 feet too high. Is that a problem? No, that depends. Have a look at the, the wind. So a little bit of a tailwind. The weight is 57 tons. I think it's a bit hard to see. Yeah, it's 57. So we're kind of light. So yeah, it's probably not a problem yet, but it's definitely something to watch out for. Okay, so let's uh, skip ahead a bit and see what happens here. Okay, so approaching 20 miles, so we can do the altitude calculation or the profile calculation for 20 miles. So 20 times 3 is 6,000 uh, 6, feet. We're doing 250 knots, so we should fly 2,000 feet lower. So uh, it's 4,000 feet. Now, um, you get the other thing what you should do is when you pass about 5,000 feet, you should uh, activate the approach phase or if you want to do it selected, um, set the speed at uh, a green dot uh, green dot speed. Okay, so we are approaching. Well, first the the the, the approach phase is not activated yet, so that's a little bit on the late side. You could do it at 4,000 feet also, no problem. But uh, let's definitely keep an eye on that. So here's 20 miles. So the, we should be at the 4,000 feet with this speed, and we're at 4,600 feet. So we're still kind of four, about five or 600 feet high. Now, is that a problem? Yeah, but 20 miles, you should start to fix that with the speed brake. But um, that's not done here. Now, okay, let's see when the approach phase is activated here. We're approaching 4,000 feet, still not. Okay, so this is a bit on the late side to start to reduce to green node speed. Okay, next what you want to do is at 15 miles, 1.5, you want to uh, start to slow down to um, S speed. So you should already be at the green dot speed by that time and start to and asking for flap 1 when you pass 15 miles to start to slow down to S speed. But that's also not done. So now, okay, a few other things go wrong here. Uh, with our company, we have to be at maximum 210 knots at 3000 feet. So that's something to watch out for. So it looks like that the first officer is not aware of that. So I'm just watching it, okay? Give him a chance to to um, fix it or to do something about it. But uh, it doesn't look like he uh, is aware of that. So there's 15 miles here. So we already start to ask for flap one. But of course we can't do that because we're too fast. Okay, so that I told him, okay, you press VS0 because you're gonna bust your speed limitation here. Okay, so uh, now select your speed lower. You should actually just manage, activate the approach phase, it's not done yet here. But, um, okay, so now we start to slow down. Now he sets the speed at 210. This is also not correct. The maximum speed is 210 knots for for our company anyways. And that, that doesn't mean that you have to select that speed. It means that you cannot fly faster, but if you select exactly that speed, you might fly faster. And you might also get end up above profile, which is exactly what happened uh, soon after. So now uh, he sets, uh, if I backtrack a little bit here, yeah, okay, so V0, and now he selects a speed, uh, a vertical speed lower. But again, like because your speed is still 220, if you start to descend again, he will also bust that uh, speed uh, limitation. And uh, perhaps he wants to start slowing down because he don't, doesn't want to increase the power because as soon as the trend arrow hits the speed bug, it will add power. But uh, you should fix that in a different way, but just putting the speed bug lower at green dot speed. So activate the approach phase and then manage your speed. But that's not done. So I told him, no, set your vertical speed back to uh, zero, please. 
Uh, you see me pointing at the screen here. Technically, already busted it. Um, there's not that much though. So vertical speed zero. Now you have to manage your speed. Uh, activate the approach phase. Manage your speed, or put the speed back lower because now the aircraft starts to add power. And even though you are below the glide slope, you are still very fast. And like we just calculated before, you are above uh, profile really. Because don't forget, the profile is not just uh, three times stable, but you also have to take into account your speed. Okay, so let's have a look what happens next. So here comes the power. This is not what you want. And um, you should really uh, manage the speed. So let me skip ahead a little bit. Okay, so here's the glide slope alive. The speed is still selected at 210. It doesn't make sense at all. You should really start to slow down here. And there's log star. And um, yeah, okay. So th the thing is, is with an ILS, you need to be at the very least at S speed when you're on the ILS and preferably a little bit below so that you can select flap 2 just when you intercept the glide slope. So if you, uh, in a situation like this, when you are flying level at 3000 feet, you want to select flap 2 as soon as you are uh, uh, one dot below the glide slope like this. But of, co of course you can't do that because we haven't even selected flap 1 yet. So that is not correct. Okay, let's see what happens next. So now the speed is managed, activate the approach phase and the speed is managed and now we start to slow down. The truss goes, goes back to idle again and we could select flap 1 now. And don't wait for it. So again, as soon as the trend arrow hits the speed puck, which is green dot in this case, it will start to act, increase power, which is not what you want. So let's glide slope star. And now, okay, so in this case it will start to lower the nose. So the, the um, power will not go on. But so now you are on the glide slope with no flaps. This is not what you want to do. Like I said before, you should be at least at S speed. Okay, so let's see how long that takes. So still waiting, so there's GS and lock, and still no flaps, passing 3000 feet. Now the other thing uh, to be very uh, aware, of, which is important you're aware of that, if you are on the glide slope at uh, 3000 feet, if you're on the glide slope or worse above the glide slope, passing 3000 feet and you cannot select flap 2 because you're too fast, you need to lower the gear. It's very important, otherwise you will end up, you might fly an unstable approach. You might get away with uh, lowering the gear 2500 feet, depending on the weight, weight and wind. Now we are very light, so in this case, you, we would probably make it in. But um, normally you should take 3000 feet for that. So if, you, if you're on the glide slope or above the glide slope, you're passing 3000 feet, you can't select flap 2 because you're too fast, you need to lower the gear. Okay. So still uh, no flaps and um, approaching, okay, passing 2800 feet now. Does not look good at all. Uh, well, it's not that it's unsafe, but it's just you might fly an unstable approach, and of course, it costs fuel if you have to go around. So, okay, so now flap 1 is selected. Okay, so that, that's why I told the first officer, okay, you need to lower the gear now because um, you are high on energy. Uh, yes, you're on the glide slope, but uh, you're uh, only flap one and you're basically at green speed still on the glide slope. So you need that drag. Okay, gear down. And uh, we have a little bit of a headwind, not much, it's not much wind at all. Uh, again, we are quite light, so that will help. So now the speed starts to reduce and now you have to act very quickly because you have not much time to fix it. Again, when, this, when the trend arrow hits the speed target, it will the aircraft will start to increase power. This is not what you want. So you have to be quick enough to right there ask for flap, um, flap two. Okay, don't wait for that. Okay, now flap two is just selected, good. And now we, um, the next thing you have to do, you really need more drag because gear alone and flap two is not enough. As soon as you can select flap, uh, more flaps, so flap three in this case, uh, in this case, when you are far enough below VEV next, now depending on the turbulence, that could be five or 10, uh, five or 10 knots. Uh, when you uh, should uh, immediately select the ne next flap stage and don't wait for it because you need that additional drag. Okay, so this 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 doesn't seem to be too much turbulence here. So five knots below V even X is fine for me. I can uh, so okay. There is uh, flap three selected, and now again we're looking for five knots uh, below V even X in this case because there's not much turbulence and select flap full. There, there you go. Flap full selected. And now it's just a matter of doing the landing checklist and waiting for the speed to reduce. And you can see a little bit of headwind. Uh, we got the gear down, flap full, and the speed is reducing nicely. And then the aim is to be um, stable at uh, 1500 feet to give you a little bit of margin, but um, you can uh, push it down to uh, 1000 feet or 500 feet even if you are a visual. So, okay, so there we're passing uh, 1500 feet. The speed is just uh, about 10 knots above um, the uh, V app. 
and we are fully configured so we are stable so that's how we uh, fixed it of course before that a couple of things went wrong but uh, every opportunity is a learning uh, learning opportunity and just uh, with uh, like this at the same time i hope you enjoyed this video and see you next time if you like this video please consider buying my book practical descent energy management it contains loads of examples of how to manage a descent and approach and it is the only book available on this subject there is a paperback and an ebook version available you can find a link in the description below